Okay, we're going to talk about wheel speed sensor testing. This is a 2010 Chevy Malibu. Let's go ahead and go underneath this car and show you how to check or run some tests on a wheel speed sensor. This car, like many cars, has four wheel anti-lock brakes. And there's a wheel speed sensor at each wheel. And it's built into the wheel bearing. Okay. And what I've done thus far is I got two straight pins and I've uh, teed into the circuit. Now, since this is a digital wheel speed sensor, I'm going to use my multimeter here to show that um, one of the wires gets 11 or 12 volts from the EVCM. So what I'm going to do, I'll set this back over here. First of all, I'm going to connect to my connector up high here. All right, and I'm just going to clip, this is supposed to be my black lead, the yellow one here. <laughs> I'd use an extension. Okay, and it's not going to want to stay. I'm going to clip onto the 11 volt lead, 12 volt lead, whatever. I'm just going to hold this on the ground, and I will show. Okay, we're, le we're measuring pretty close to 11 volts. 10.9 something. Okay, again, this is a digital wheel speed sensor. Analog, the other style, there's no voltage provided to the sensor. It's a permanent magnet and generates an AC signal. But we'll show that later. But this, once again, is a digital and it creates a square wave. All right, so we got power to it. That's one significant thing to know. Are we getting power to the, to the uh, sensor? Of course, based upon the diagnostic code, will determine my, my uh, route to testing. Okay. Well, now let's introduce the oscilloscope. And we're going to use the picoscope. Okay. Get this out of the way. You know how the picoscope works, or you should by now. Uh, the icon is right here, Pico 6 Automotive. Okay, I've already got it loaded. And what's nice about this unit is I can select Automotive. I can go into Sensors. And I'm going to hit ABS, and it gives me my choice, Analog or Digital. Well, once again, most every vehicle, probably since about 2005, 2006, some earlier are digital style. They need to be digital because they have more uh, precision when it comes to um, for the stability control system because analog brakes and stability control all work together. I'm going to go back up here for a moment and I'm going to clamp on to the signal wire, not the voltage wire, the other wire. The other wire is the signal wire, not the 11 volt wire. And let's see if we can't uh, generate a signal. Okay, so we got the hookup. Now, again, I've opened up Pico. I'm gonna, there's the so-called example they say I should see. Mine won't look quite that good because I'm going to spin the wheel by hand. If I was getting the car and run the wheel, it'd probably look that way with the engine running. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and filter. You turn filtering on, that'll be a whole lot better. I'm going to change the voltage too. They selected it to 5, I'm going to go 10, just so we can see the signal better. Alright, so I'm going to step over here and spin the wheel. You're watching the screen? Okay. Okay, I'm spinning the wheel by hand, so that's not very effective or it looks even close to this. But at least I know there's a signal coming out. Again, the real test is probably to run the car, spin the wheel. All right, so that's digital sensors. I'm going to unhook my leads. I'm going to get my other leads and go ahead and bring in the camera a little closer to the cabinet here. Now I've got two wheel bearing hubs here. Of course, quite often they got the ABS wheel speed sensor built into them. All right, I'm going to grab this one first. I'm going to hook up to it, and again, these are a permanent magnet to generate their own AC signal. It won't be a digital wave. Of course, i got to tell the scope I'm doing an analog 
sensor. So I got the wire hooked up, but I better go back and tell uh, the scope. I'm actually going to do ABS analog. I'm just going to go two wheels. I only need, I only need, only need one channel really. But. Okay. Get past this is what a signal should look like. And now we can generate that here pretty easy. All right, so I've got it hooked up to my wheel. And all I'm going to do is spin the wheel and you watch the signal. I can generate what we just saw as an example, didn't we? This is a good sensor. Be able to get the signal and me cranking. Mm -hmm. so that's a good that's a good wheel speed sensor. Let's look at this other one. This is kind of interesting. It's not open either. Yeah, we got a little bit of hash, a little bit of noise. I'm gonna connect to this. And sometimes this thing starts putting out a signal just sitting here. I haven't even spun the wheel yet. Look at the signal we're getting. This caused the car that it was on to have kind of an erratic ABS sensation. And it only would ABS brake at, say, speeds below five miles per hour, which is just the opposite of what should happen. I'm not even turning the wheel. Look at the signal we're getting. And if I turn the wheel hub, nothing more happens. I'll bet we have a shorted, you know, bad insulated wire condition inside the windings inside here. So here's a bad one. Oh, I did get kind of a crazy pattern there for a minute, and now it's quit. This here is just kind of an erratic signal. Causing, it was causing some funny problems. Pretty fun. Okay, so we've talked about analog, and we've talked about the one up higher on this car, a digital. Now let's go in uh, the pro demand. Okay. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit as you need to. We're going to go ahead and just look up, you know, on ProDemand. Um, 2010 Chevrolet Malibu. It's a 2.4 uh, LS. It's not the, uh, and it's not the uh, uh, flex fuel. It's just plain old gasoline engine. And uh, it does have the four-speed automatic. I'm just going to use this vehicle, and I think I'm ready to go. Okay, when dealing with any electronic component, you ought to do your, you need to, you need to do the following. Okay, first of all, I'm going to go into uh, chassis, because that's what breaks, you know, it's part of the, is the under car or chassis system. And under chassis, of course, we're looking for brakes. And we're dealing with an analog brake system with traction control and stability control. You really can't talk about one without the other on today's cars, because many of today's cars have all three systems. In fact, since 2012, it's they have to by, by federal regulation. So, but do yourself a favor, and let's go look at description and operation. And I believe this does not have uh, uh, LAT. I don't know what LAT stands for. <laughs> okay. Um, This talks about the, si the system, analog brakes, dynamic rear proportion. What is dynamic rear proportioning? Here's traction control, of course, vehicle stability control enhanced system. Um, actually, back up here, it does talk about dynamic rear proportioning under the system with LAT, sorry. Uh, dynamic rear proportioning, it is explained I'm cutting out a lot of tape, aren't I? Oh, I saw it. I, okay. Well, more or less, dynamic group proportion is no more hydraulic valve. It's all done by the, the electronics of the analog brake system. Okay. But what's neat about system description, once again, is okay, so here's the following components we have an EBCM, or electronic brake control module. We've got a system relay, talks about the relay briefly. We have brake pressure sensors, and we'll show you where that is in just a moment. Okay, uh, there's a pump motor and internal valves and outlet valves. And right here it says the wheel speed sensor on this car, the EBCM sends 12 volt reference voltage to each wheel speed sensor. 
This is valuable information when diagnosed.